Hi, my name is Ruth Hoyt, and today we're going to be talking about selecting the best of the best photos. I'm going to be your speaker, and Susan Upton is our wonderful moderator. She's been helping me with these Zoom sessions and doing a wonderful job. We're going to talk about selecting the best photo for whatever the purpose it is. Um, we're showing just a cardinal on a cactus right now, but we're going to see a bunch of different photos to make my points today. So before we begin, I'd like to share a couple of points and things to remember. Art is very subjective. And no two people see your photos the same way you do. So keep that in mind. You may be prejudiced one way or biased another way than somebody else who's looking at the same picture. I like green jays, so you're going to see some green jays today. So with this in mind, let's get our ducks in a row and let the fun begin. Here we've got a bobcat stretching that was taken at the Santa Clara Ranch a couple of years ago. I uh, really like that shot. My students know the four aspects of every photo, and I'm going to just gloss over them quickly because this is an overview, not a complete uh, tutorial. So my students know the four aspects of every photo. That is to have your picture in focus, which is the sharpness, the exposure or the lighting, the composition or the arrangement of the subject or subjects within the frame, and then the content or the story that the photo tells. There is a fifth point. My students also know that some photos have a bonus factor, and that's called the wow factor. Those are the kind of pictures that when you first see them, you say, wow, you're impressed. So that, that factor is something that's sort of a touchy-feely thing. It might not be something concrete that you could say you see every time. Let's look at some photos and numbers. And I promise this is interesting. Well, it is to me anyway. Um, I first started using Instagram. Um, it's almost three years now. My friend Allison Newberry came down to South Texas and she really encouraged me to start. And so I'm going to uh, give you a little sneak preview of what I see when I look at the backside of my Instagram account. I have a business account and it gives you all kinds of uh, information that you don't get on a regular account. Um, this is a screenshot on the right of my top 12 liked images on Instagram in the past two years. I can see all kinds of other things, like how many people followed as a result of each of these pictures. But right now, we're just looking at the likes. Of these 12 images, 10 were posted within three months of each other. The other two were posted within five months of that same time frame. So what I'm going to do is just look at the first three placements, number one, number two, and number three. They all have more than 10,000 likes. And let's just take a little look at them. Uh, number one has 14,249 likes. The question is why? I'm really not 100% sure. I posted this on December 22nd, 2018 just a couple of days before Christmas, and my account just sort of felt like it was going viral. I had so many thousands of likes on it. And yet, the picture that's number two in likes is one that I like even better. And I think in thinking about assessing a photo, we talk about the focus, the exposure, the composition, the content, and the wow factor. To me, this one has much more than the number one picture, yet it's got about 1,500 fewer likes than number one. I don't know, I just find this photo very humorous. It was one of those kind of shots that I just, I was there at the right place and right time and I got it. Number three, um, it's a nice little female Northern Cardinal. She's got her wing out, um, yet, I don't know, how did she get almost as many likes as the, uh, the Green Jay? I have no idea, I'm stumped on that one. If you think about uh, assessing the photo, yes, she's in focus, yes, the lighting is good, although she's in the shade, so you can see the shade 
uh, on the top half of her and she was over the pond. So she was getting a reflection off the water to, to light up the front side of her. Um, and if you look at the composition, it's all right, but it's not exceptional. I would say that um, her wing is behind some brush and you really can't see it, but it's there. Um, so I, I'm not so sure on that one, uh, why it came out number three, but it did. So let's look at the numbers. Um, December 22nd was when my account were, went sort of crazy. And so I've got a chart that I made here showing week by week what my numbers did. So this is the lead up to December 22nd. Um, the 1st through the 7th, the 8th through the 14th, and the 15th through the 21st. And I've circled the ones that made um, accrued more than 4,500 likes. There's no rhyme or reason to it. The numbers go up and down and up and down, and they never really consistently go up. So I really don't know why my numbers did that, but that's the way they are. So. Something did happen on December 22nd, 2018. I'm not really sure what it was, but I was very happy, but somewhat confused, I have to admit. All right, so let's move on and talk about uh, selecting your best photos. The mere thought of selecting your best photos is intimidating when you have thousands to review. On my mainframe computer, I have almost 200,000 images uh, cataloged in Lightroom, which is sort of a daunting number. And I made a quick selection of uh, tagged images and highlighted in red and five stars. So you, you're just getting a little sample of what's there. There are four basic steps for culling, and I call it culling. We're really not going to throw away any pictures. We're just going to tag them as keepers or rejects. The rejects don't get thrown away, they just get put to the side so you're not looking at them over and over while you're trying to find the keepers. So the four things that we do, are the four things that I do when I'm um, culling pictures, I keep in mind the purpose of the photo, the judging criteria, because we wanna be consistent, I do a portfolio review, and then I make my final selections. So I'm going to uh, break this down. Each point is going to have a star at the top of the screen when you see the slide. So the purpose of the photo, it can be a photo contest picture. If you're entering a photo contest, you might want to uh, pick your photos differently than if it was for a magazine or book submission. Or if you're wanting to make a fine art print, that's gonna be different criteria that you'd use. And again, social media, they're, they're yet another way to sort your pictures. With social media, you don't have to have the file size, you don't have to have the, the content so much. Um, you can crop to make it look better. So each, each purpose of the photo, uh, you need to think about that when you're sorting your pictures. So photo contests, you might be looking at photos to enter in a photo contest. And you want a nice clean composition, uh, some action, some wow factor, all the things that we talked about. So I'm just going to run through these. Now this picture and the next picture are both taken on the same perch. So I would have to choose which photo that I'm going to use rather than uh, put both in because you don't want to see the same perch twice. <coughs> Let's move on. So if you're going to work on submitting pictures for a magazine or a book, you might want to have your photos looking left or right. You might want to crop your photo tightly or you might want to shoot it more uh, loose. And fine art prints. With a fine art print, you're going to want to have good lighting and a nice composition and uh, some point of interest that draws your eye to it. And in this case, the branch goes right down to the bird. You might not want to make a night print. This photo was taken at night. It's a blooming prickly pear cactus. 
and the lighting is nighttime lighting. So unless the person who's looking at the picture knows that it's from nighttime, you might not like the way that looks. I don't know, maybe you would like the way this one looks. The lighting is very dramatic. It's night and the edge of the cactus is just lit. Let's talk about social media. Social media can be anything you want it to be. Some people love our, our um, bald eagle. Some people like a bird that looks fat and fluffy. This one I thought was sort of funny because it's a roadrunner holding a rock in its beak. Why he's doing that, I'm not sure. Um, the more the merrier. A lot of times when you put uh, multiple subjects in your, um, in your picture, uh, it draws some attention. This one I think is a great shot. It's a funny shot. It's a sopping wet green jay and he's shaking off so there's water everywhere. But you have to think about social media. People are usually looking at small uh, phone screens. So this one may not convey as well as some of the others. Does anybody have any questions right now? Uh, Ruth, we haven't received any so far, if you would like to proceed. Okay. So let's go on to point number two, judging criteria. You wanna review the guidelines. Let's say, for example, you're going to submit a picture to a magazine and you want to consider leaving space in the magazine pictures because there might be some text like if your photo was selected to go with an article you might get the the first page of the article and have the title on this on the um on your photo you want to talk about what is appropriate and do i have it and i must be objective so those are the four points that we're going to look at really quick here so review the guidelines. I already started talking about that, but um, you might want to make sure that you have a lot of negative space for a magazine or book picture. You might crop it more tightly. Here's a looser picture. There's more negative space in this one. This one's a little bit tighter. He's bigger in the frame and closer to the cactus but there's still room over on the right. I don't like to leave a lot of negative space under the bird. Um, I'd rather have a little bit more over the bird. And in this case, I don't have that. I wouldn't want somebody to put a title under the bird's tail. It would look like he's um, dropping the title, shall we say. Sometimes you'll get your subject to look back at you. And I caught that with this picture. I use that one for Valentine's Day on social media because the uh, heart-shaped cactus and the red bird just looked really good, like a Valentine. So what's appropriate? It depends on what's going to happen with your picture. So if you were entering a wildlife photo contest, you wouldn't want to put a cow in it because the cow is a domestic animal and that would not work with a wildlife contest. If you're going to sell fine art prints, you might not want to use something like this because a fine art print might go in a hospital or a doctor's office or uh, a lobby of a building and most people aren't going to enjoy looking at a rat. There's another one. They're just a little bit too much information for the casual observer. I like interaction between my subjects, and that's what happened with this one. We have some baby uh, quail. They're actually half grown, so they're, I, I would consider them juveniles, not babies or chicks. Do I have what's necessary to fulfill what I'm looking for? Sometimes you'll get a special request, and you may or may not have what's been requested. I have a badger picture now. I didn't have one a few years ago, so I got lucky on that. Those are hard to find. I've got a, a woodpecker in flight. I know some of you have seen this on Instagram, and it was picked up by raw birds and featured, so a lot more people have seen this one recently. 
the green jay in flight. I have a lot of flight pictures. I love action. Sometimes you have action, but it's not as easy to detect. Uh, here I'm using a super wide angle lens. I'm out at Bosque del Apache and the birds are flying everywhere. The light is just barely there, but you can see birds everywhere. I'm hearing some feedback here. Is everybody muted? Uh, here we have two pairs of juvenile uh, northern bobwhite chicks with reflection. And here we have some interaction. We've got a, a mama deer with her baby just going in the water for the first time. And uh, the mama deer is licking the baby. So you've got uh, a connection, a physical connection between the two. Okay, this is a hard part. I must be objective. The judges of your photos, whether they be a photo editor or a photo contest judge, it doesn't matter. They, they don't care how hard it is to get the picture. If it took a, a long time to get just the right lighting and just the right pose and you, you got muddy or sandy and soggy, the judge or the photo editor does not care. It's how the picture looks and appeals to them that matters. This photo, I would criticize, it's that rock, the, 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 the road runner with the rock, and it actually came so close to me that I couldn't get his feet in the picture and his tail was touching the edge of the frame. Here's a habitat shot. It actually is cropped just a little bit because the bird was a little bit uh, too small in the frame to be able to, to uh, really enjoy it for what it is. I like this shot, but maybe somebody else doesn't. Uh, I entered it in a photo contest and it didn't win anything. So I need to look at this and decide why did it not win? Were the other entries just that much stronger or was I attached to this photo and it's really not that good after all? I was thrilled to get it because it looks like he's uh, surfing or uh, sunbathing and he's got his legs all stretched out. but. Um, the judge just didn't uh, choose, choose the photo as a winner. I like this photo because I know how hard it was to get it, but that doesn't mean a judge is going to like it. It is a rattlesnake and the eyes are not really visible. They're there, but you really can't see the eyes. The uh, tongue is up over the, the face and it's sharp and yet, the rattle is moving, so it's got a blur. And that's why I like the photo. But um, I don't know, it, it just depends. Maybe somebody doesn't like snakes uh, or they just, um, they, they would much rather have you have a, a view from on the ground eye to eye and see the eyeball on the snake. So you don't know what the photo editor or the contest judge wants. So it depends on what they want as to how they'll be picked. So let's go on to the portfolio review. You wanna organize your photos by category. You wanna pick and reject, uh, and you wanna be pretty ruthless about it. I know my name is Ruth, I can be ruthless. Uh, the goal is to get rid of 90% of your photos, not get rid of as in throw away, but call them so that what you're left with is 10%. So if you have a thousand pictures, you're gonna end up with a hundred. If you have a hundred, you're gonna end up with 10. And you repeat the process till you get there. You're gonna review your picks and think about those four aspects, the focus, exposure, composition, and content, and the wow factor. And this is in a couple of my slides because it's critical to keep doing that. You want to, to uh, be sure that you're paying attention to those basics. So let's organize by category. Here I've got a picture of a male painted bunting, very colorful, and I've got five other pictures of the same bird. It's the same photo, it's cropped five different ways other than the original. And what I do is uh, decide what the use is, and that's when you choose which one to go with. So then you need to pick and reject. So obviously you can't keep all six of the painted buntings. You'd get rid of all of them except one, or maybe all of them. 
you want to end up with 10%. So you go through. You can, uh, with a nature picture, if it's not a recognizable um, park or wildlife refuge, you can flip the photo from left to right and choose which one you like better. You won't keep both of them, and you might not keep either of them. Same thing here with the hummingbird. This is a hummingbird that I took uh, a few years ago, and I really liked it, um, have sold it several times, and it's been printed this way, but I think it looks just as good this way. It depends on the application. So depending on what your uh, requirements are for the submission guidelines or the photo contest, you can flip it one way or the other. Okay, the next two pictures are the same bird on the same perch, but it's looking two different directions. Some people like this one because it's um, looking to the left and it has its beak open, which implies a little bit of action. He's either talking or vocalizing. Um, whereas other people like the bird when it turns around and makes eye contact with the photographer. You have to decide which one you think is the stronger image for whatever you're going to use it for. Here I've got the same perch, but two different birds come on it, the male and the female. And depending on the usage of the image, you'll pick one or the other. Let's review picks. You take uh, you, all of the, the ones that you've rejected, you don't throw them away, you just sort them out and then you review what's left and we call those the picks. I love this shot, but am I going to keep it? I don't know. This one's a hard one to read. It's a turkey and she's in sharp focus but she's throwing dirt everywhere and it's a hard picture to read. You have to look for the face and, and if you look carefully, you can see that the dirt is swirling all around and even big dirt clods are coming off of her. This one is a habitat shot. It's not a real clean shot, but depending on the application, maybe this is one to keep for a pick. Some photo contests will allow you to make some minor adjustments and, and some do not. Uh, the, the piece of grass that's sticking out of the top of the back of the bird is light and it really detracts. So if it's a picture that you were making for a fine art print, sure, I would get rid of that. Um, I don't do a whole lot of that kind of stuff with my photos because I try and take clean shots all the time, but sometimes you get a really nice shot and you have clutter around it and you have to decide, okay, am I attached to the photo or is it really as good as I think it is? Some birds are shy, and when you startle them, they, um, they will fly, and that's what happened in this picture. And you have to decide, does the bird look frightened or does it look like it's just getting ready to take off? To me, it looks frightened because I know when I was there. However, I did put it in a photo contest and it did get a placement. So um, whoever judged it didn't see it that way. They weren't there. This one's a little bit messy, but I think it's uh, sort of cool because it's a habitat shot. It's a bird on a perch with uh, some natural uh, vegetation all around. Some people wouldn't like this one because the sticks, the little uh, thin sticks go up into the bird and they're visible. Okay, so let's review your four aspects and wow, the wow factor. This this photo I entered in a photo contest in the humor category and it won first place. I was really sort of dubious because I thought it was funny because he was all contorted, um, but I wasn't sure it would do well and it, it got first place, better than the other two pictures that I had put. This is something different. Paul Denman was with me and when I took that picture, I was, uh, it was at night and we had the eclipse and I was doing uh, multiple exposures in my camera. It was very cold. I remember all the circumstances, but that doesn't make any difference to the judges. It depends on what's, what else is in the contest, if it's a contest picture, or um, if it's, it's a, for an editorial purpose, they may or may not like it. Something here, I would say, this one has the wow factor because it's a very big, circular pattern and it spirals uh, almost out of control, but it's, it's in focus. So I like this one for um, patterns. 
okay, that does not have the wow factor, does it? This is uh, at Bosque del Apache, which is in New Mexico. And I, we were uh, fogged in one morning and I still went out, I always go out, and you just never know what you're going to get. This photo, I think, um, I, I have memories of this scene and the challenge it, uh, the challenge that it was to, to make the exposure, but it really is sort of just a gray picture to most people. I could probably improve it a lot in uh, the computer, but again, I, people who know me know I don't like to play around with my photos a lot. I just like to look at them, get them in the computer, get them processed and get them out. Here we go, we're still at Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge and um, the blast off in the morning, the birds are all coming up off the ground and flying around and um, making patterns across the sky. Does anybody have questions now? Yes, we do. We have several questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. First question is from Sherry. Uh, do you post on social media at a certain time of day? Is there a better time in your opinion? Okay, repeat that. I didn't hear the first part. Do you post on social media at a certain time of the day? And do you think there's a better time to post? So we know that you go to work early when you're actually in the field working. So you tend to try to post as early as you can, but that's not always the case. So you want to elaborate on that? Sure. Um, when I'm going to be in the field, I'm up a couple of hours before sunrise and I meet my ranch guests at least a half an hour before sunrise. So I don't have time to do that kind of uh, uh, posting when I'm working with somebody. So I generally am posting at 4, 4.30 in the morning. Um, I'm going to say you would have to look at your account depending on um, what kind of uh, following that you have. Most of the people who follow me are bird watchers and bird photographers, um, some artists. The artists I don't think get up so early as the bird watchers, but um, I generally try to post first thing in the morning, but uh, since the COVID pandemic, uh, things have changed a little bit. I stay pretty much at home most of the time. Uh, I spend my time in my yard and in my house so uh, sometimes I uh, work late into the night so I don't get up as early. So I haven't been as consistent lately, but um, I wanna change that and get back to it. I think I do better when I post early in the morning. People have all day to get onto their um, social media and see your pictures. Great. Uh, the next few questions are regarding the, uh, the actual presentation. And I think you may have covered some in the slides that came after after the, the questions, but Matt has a question about your workflow and the culling process you're using. He's, he's curious how much time you spend. Do you cull each day until you get it down or do you just let it pile up and do it in one big okay. fail batch? That's an excellent uh, question, Matt. Back in the film days, we, we did the uh, slides. We would put 20 pictures, 20 slides on the light box and you have a loop in your hand and you do, you do the 20 pictures in 20 seconds. I call it the one second look. And I still do pretty much the same thing with my photos in Lightroom. Uh, I, I have the, the pictures up and they're full screen and it's just, I have my right hand on the arrow, uh, the, the right arrow and my uh, other finger on the left arrow. So I go left and right with my arrows and I just go zipping through the pictures. And in my left hand, I've got um, my uh, one finger on the P for pick and the other finger hovering over the X for reject. So it's pick, or, pick, uh, pick for P or P for pick and X for reject. And then the left and the right arrows. And I go zipping through. I don't like to spend lots of time on the computer. So sometimes they do pile up um, and I'm notorious for letting them accumulate and not looking at them. So um, I, I have to say I'm guilty of that, but in a perfect world, I would, every time I uh, go through my pictures, every, every time I take pictures, I would go through them and get them uh, either uh, picked or rejected. All righty. 
the next question is uh, similar. Bridget and Dan both have a question about the contest. How often do you enter? How do you, how do you find these contests? And then how do you determine which ones that you should enter? Okay, I, I am very familiar with lots of contests. It's been a big part of my life for a very long time. I was a photo contest director for the Valley Land Fund in South Texas, and I've, uh, I've been involved in contests from all aspects, whether participating or conducting or coaching. I do a lot of coaching uh, photographers. If anybody's interested in uh, having me as their coach, that's one of the things that I do. I help the photographer give them advice on uh, their portfolio of what they bring to me and make suggestions of how to improve. So it's a, it, it, it's a process and it's, I'm gonna call it a photo contest world. You just have to know um, what they are. And once you get involved, you'll start hearing about others. The one thing that um, I, always make sure before I would enter any contest, I haven't entered contests in a while, but um, is that I wanna make sure that I retain all rights to the photos. And um, there, are, there are contests where they, uh, they, they claim the rights to the photos. You don't want to enter any of those contests. Great, that's, uh, that's it for now. If you're ready to jump back into the program. Yep, we're coming into the home stretch here. So in your final selection or selections, depending on how many photos you're looking for, you wanna review your guidelines, ask yourself, do my photos fit the guidelines for whatever I'm trying to do? And again, look at that four aspects and wow, and then uh, rate and reorganize your photos. So let's go through that real quick. So let's review the guidelines. You have to know what the um the purpose of your photo is if you're entering a photo contest you want to have something that has impact so entering a picture of a gray bird or brown bird in brown dirt with a soft background is not going to have as much impact as something that's more colorful and has more action sometimes you might want to enter a, a wildlife contest where the wildlife is not significant in the uh, photo so it's more of an environmental shot. This one was at uh, Bosque del Apache. And um, I really like that because that bird wasn't there every day. And um, as the week wore on, the wind was taking all the leaves out of that tree. So the picture um, the next day and the next day after that would not have been as nice as this one. I'm, I'm fond of this one. This bird is wind tossed and you might not know it, um, but if you look at his feathers, he's all fluffy and his, his uh, big tail has been caught by the wind. But he's not squawking or flapping his wings or doing anything, so it's, it's more of a passive uh, action shot. This guy's doing the splits, and I just love this shot. There was only one berry left on that cactus, and he jumped up, plucked it, and did the splits and looked back over his shoulder at me. And I just, um, maybe this is one that I'm uh, partial to. You can tell in the excitement of the description of what was happening. But uh, I just like the texture that you see on the berry, all those little stickers sticking off of it. And he's just barely holding on to it with the tip of his beak. Okay, so do my photos fit what the, what the, um, the guidelines are? So um, it depends on the picture. So this is a caterpillar from the bottom side going up a, uh, a, a piece of uh, a flower stalk. And so it's, I'm gonna say it's semi-abstract. You don't see its face, you don't see its eyes. Um, you just see these legs. And so would it go in patterns or abstract? I don't know, you have to decide. This one I put in the wrong place. This is a walking stick, and it's it, it, what you're seeing are the two antennae um, up at the top, you know, going straight up and down, and then those are the front legs uh, going left and right at 45 degree angles. And I just um, I think this is a funny picture, so I entered it in humor. But actually, I think it goes better as 
camouflage. It looks like a stick of grass, right? This is another picture that I thought was funny. It looks like they're doing the hokey pokey where they both have their left legs out and uh, the one's got his wings up. And um, so to me, that was a funny picture. And I entered it in humor, it didn't get anything. So maybe it's not so funny. When you, when you experiment with what you're doing, you'll get more and more practice, but you also have to keep in mind each set of judges or photo editor that you submit work to is going to be different. And the same judge might judge your photo differently on a different day. So you cannot get attached to it. It's just the nature of submitting photos for competition or publication. You, you just have to be able to take the rejection. This one I really like, but unfortunately I had too much lens. I had my 600 millimeter lens on and um, the, the great Kiskity on the right was on the perch and it had gone down to, um, to get a, uh, a fish or something. It didn't get it, but it came back up to the perch. And while it was gone, the golden fronted woodpecker had moved in. So they each thought it was their perch. And then you have the, uh, the, uh, the controversy between the two. They're making eye contact. I, I love the photo, it's just not good enough because the wings and, and part of the head are out of the photo. Okay, so go back to your four aspects, your focus, your exposure, your composition, and your content, and then the wow factor. So when you look at a photo, you have to decide, uh, does it meet those criteria? And this one I think does. He's not moving, but you really get the idea of how he feels about things right now. He's not very happy. This one's an action shot, but unless you really look closely, you don't see that that dragonfly has a little tiny leaf hopper in its mouth and it's coming to perch. It's, it, so for me, maybe I should have cropped it more um, to make it a little bit tighter, but the more you crop, the more pixels you lose, and also the details of any kind of flaws are going to be exaggerated. So yes, he's flying and um, the wings are vibrating. So the wings are not sharp, uh, sharply in focus. I like this action shot. This guy was like a little bulldozer and uh, it had rained and his tunnel had collapsed. It's a pocket gopher for those who don't know what it is. Um, we have them in deep south Texas here, and they, they live underground. They rarely ever come out uh, into daylight, but this guy's uh, tunnel had collapsed and he was excavating. I like doing night photography. Uh, when it gets hot outside, you can do uh, night photography and it's not so hot during the night. Is anybody going to see the uh, comet and try and photograph it? Okay, so rate and reorganize. Once you get down to your 10%, you may have to get down to just one picture or three pictures, depending on what the, uh, the use is. So you wanna give it a, it, it, when you get down to the 10%, you wanna rate it. You know, you can rate from one to 10 or one to five or yes, no. You can do it any way you like. Just have, have a uh, system to, Make sure that you're consistent from one picture to the next. This one I'm very attached to, but it's not a very competitive picture. I like the fact that all the parts of the story are on one photo. You have the, the uh, exoskeleton from when the caterpillar emerged from uh, uh, going through the metamorphosis, and you have the uh, chrysalis that it made, and then the butterfly emerged and was a very fresh specimen. So the whole story is there, and I, I'm very fond of this picture, but I haven't uh, had much luck with doing anything with it. Here you've got a story. You've got the, the, the father, uh, Northern Bob White, with one of his chicks, and the, chicks, uh, the chick is uh, going to drink water, and the father is standing guard over the baby. So there's a story there. Another action shot, green jays. I love the green jays in flight. And this one is shot loosely. 
if I were going to um, do something with this, like maybe for a photo contest, I would uh, get rid of at least, um, I'm gonna say a third of the right side so that the bird is not smack in the middle of the picture. I don't like bullseye shots, but sometimes when you're doing flight, uh, flight shots, it's happening so fast that that's what you get. Here's one that I like uh, better because they're, the cactus isn't the main thing, it's the bird coming by. Two is better than one sometimes, and here you've got the male golden-fronted woodpecker up on top and the female looking up at him, and he's got his beak partly open. You've got a nice stump and some grass, nothing in the background to distract. You can see that there's uh, a background. It's not just a solid sheet of green. It's, a, it's an open field. Uh, I, I just, I, I like the way this one is positioned. They're in the top third of the picture. And uh, well, the, the female isn't, but she's looking up at him and that puts her up higher. Okay, questions? Uh, we don't have any questions, Ruth, um, at this time. Well, that's okay. That makes my show a little bit shorter. At this point, I'd like to mention that um, Topaz software is one that I've uh, put into my workflow. I don't use it all the time, but it is a game changer. When you have a picture that has a lot of noise from a high ISO, or if you're working on action shots and you want it just a little bit crisper, we have uh, two popular applications that I use. I, ha I have more software than that, but uh, these are the two that I like to talk about the most. The AI stands for artificial intelligence and denoise. It helps you reduce the noise in your photos. It used to be called grain uh, back in the film days, but they call it noise in digital photography. And AI Sharpen helps you with sharpening photos that are not quite tack sharp. Each of these two softwares, uh, software applications has two parts to it. So the denoise has a sharpen feature in it and the sharpen software has a denoise feature in it. You just pick which one uh, works better for your photo. I am an affiliate with Topaz, so if you want, you can contact me for a discount. And for further information, you can contact me directly at ruth at ruthhoyt.com. That's through my website. Or if you uh, want to reach me through Instagram, Instagram, I'm on that every day. So that's Ruth Hoyt Photo. We do have a question, Ruth, that came in. If uh, okay. you have a second. I'll give that up. Um, uh, Susan Hansen asked, do you go through the selection rejection process every time you import photos or only when you're preparing for a contest? Oh, that's a good question. Um, it varies from time to time. If I'm, if I'm working on a photo contest, I did a photo contest last year. And so I was, I was routinely uh, importing every night and trying to go through them because if you don't, it piles up and then at the end, you don't have enough time to get through them. So when I've got a project, I try and work on them every day. Otherwise, they just sort of stack up and I do have a lot of stacked up uh, photos. I think about four terabytes of images I've never looked at. Maybe I'll never look at them. I don't know. Okay, Bridget has a question. Uh, she wants to know if you use light and Topaz for most of your editing. And I would mention that usually you get a second question here, in what order do you use those tools? <laughs> you, so, uh, yeah, you've heard that before. <clears throat> so yes, um, I just added Topaz to my workflow um, earlier this year. I was blown away by some of the examples that I saw. And I said, I, I've got to check this out. And that woodpecker, um, flying off the, the perch, uh, that was not quite sharp, but with uh, Topaz, I was able to do that. What, I, what uh, Topaz recommends is that you, use, you, you have it as a plugin for your Lightroom, and so you start with the, um, you start with the denoise or the sharpen, so that you're working on a picture that has not had the pixels altered. It's the best way for the artificial intelligence to work on the photos. 
So I would typically work on um, the noise or the sharpening problem before I go on to work through the rest of it. And uh, that might lead to another question, so I'll go ahead and cover it. Some people ask if I crop first or not, and I do. If I'm going to be cropping the image, I go ahead and crop it first, then do my uh, topaz, and then go on to my workflow. Great. That's it as far as the chat box. I haven't gotten any other questions.